So this is a redo on the first part of this maple um, TV stand build that I posted last week. I'm redoing it because I lost the sound for it and um, I was able to kind of dub the sound back onto it but it was off in certain spots and a little hastily um, put out there so I just kind of wanted to clean it up a little bit and, and re-release it. So if you've already seen this video there's no point in watching it again. It's, it's basically the same gist. Um, I'm just further along on the cabinet. All I really have to do is make the false fronts, fronts for the drawers and finish it. This is going to be a three-part series. So this build is going to be made entirely of maple, maple hardwood, and maple veneer ply, and that is to match existing furniture in the customer's home. So this is just a very quick overview of me milling up some lumber. Um, I've made two other pretty in-depth videos of how I do this, explaining the jigs I made, um, why I made them. Those are in the description below, so I'm going to kind of blow through it quite quickly here because that um, material in and of itself was enough to make a whole video. So I don't go through it again on all of these builds where I'm using hardwood. Um, once I had all that hardwood, I'm now cutting it down. I started off this build by making a mistake in which I decided to save the customer some money because I got such a good deal on this maple I was going to make the legs hollow and I was going to use a lock miter bit in my router to do that and it was working pretty well until the vertical pieces I was sending through my router um, the the fence shifted ever so much and and I had some gaps in my pieces which isn't a huge problem. I was able to glue them up and I would have had just some hairline cracks to deal with, but I decided to bite the bullet and just buy um, solid legs. It would save me headache down the line of trying to fix pieces. So that was kind of the beginning of this build. You can see all the pieces were, were fitting together, but it just wasn't going to be worth trying to fix the, the miner's mistakes in it. So after that, I set it aside because I had to order that lumber online because um, they're three inch legs and that lumber is, is, can be difficult to find. Um, sometimes you have to buy very large quantities of it in order to get it and I just don't need three inch maple around the shop. So I switched over to making the top. The top is going to be a mitered frame with a floating plywood panel in, um, in the center. So these are three inch strips of that maple that I had all milled up. That maple ended up being about seven eighths of an inch thick. So for the two edges, I'm doing brighter mit miters for this. So for the two long sides, um, you could you just have to cut straight pieces. So this cabinet is six feet long, so I cut two six-foot maple strips, and then it's going to be 20 inches wide, so I cut two 20-inch strips. Um, I have a cross-cut sled that also has um, a miter jig on there, so I set it to... 45 degrees and do a test cut just to make sure that the miters are perfect because if your miters are off it's going to ruin the whole frame and then I could go through and turn those um, 20 inch strips into two mitered pieces so um, I cut that first miter and then I'll measure 20 inches to the other end of the board so these were actually cut a little oversized and cut those other miters. So the shorter pieces are basically going to have a huge through mortise going through them which will receive the miter tenon on the, the long pieces. So on the long pieces I have to cut the same amount of material off of both sides to get a centered mortise on the piece. So what I did for this was I used the same setup but I added a stop so that it would be equal on all sides and then I just test cut with some scrap maple to make sure the blade was risen just enough so on both sides I was cutting away the same amount of material and it left me with about a quarter inch little tenon. Um, I was using here the scrap just to reset that 45 because in order to cut all four sides of that um, long piece I actually ended up having to reset the jig on the other side to cut those pieces. You could see me shifting it over now to cut the other sides um, of those 45s because they have to be on both sides of the piece. So I'm just using using that stop, resetting the stop, and you could see the cut I already have on the one side lining all of that up.
and then I could make the cuts on that other side as well. So then I had to remove the rest of the material to the edge of the board and the easiest way to do this since I already had this set up was to just cut a series of curves on all of those pieces and then I could just remove the excess with a chisel. This takes a little bit of time but it gives you a nice um, a nice finish at the end of the day. So there's just uh, finishing out that miter tenon, removing all the excess with a chisel. Then to figure out how to cut the mortise into the short pieces, I kind of gauged it off of the piece I already had, but since it's a three inch wide piece, it's a three, it's gonna be a three inch tall um, mortise going through mortise going into that piece. And I'm also marking the depth on there because for this tenoning jig, you set it up so that it cuts the same distance from either side. So in order to cut these perfectly, you have to have your marks lined up um, on, on center. So this actually started smoking a little bit at first because my feather board was too tight on there and um, it was going through too slowly and since this is going three inches into maple it will smoke on you rather quickly. But I'm just using that tenoning jig so I could cut the one side, flip the piece and cut the other side and then you're left with a perfect, perfect equidistance off of each edge. And then um, once you have those two marks I just go through and, and and slightly move the fence so that I'm just cutting out the rest of those curves. So the two outer edges will frame that inner material you have to remove. I slice that out with the table saw and then um, I could go through with a chisel which I'm doing right now and just clean up that bottom. So then to dry fit this all together those those mortise pieces go on top of the tenon pieces and there is my frame. So on a lot of my pieces, I make shaker style panels, which is just a simple um, inset around all of the frame with not a lot of detailing work. But for this piece, the customer specifically wanted all the panels to be flush. So I do that throughout the entire piece. So in order to get this top part completely flush, I had to go through and cut a groove on all of my pieces right in the center and on this tenon piece I didn't want to go through the tenon so I had to lower onto the blade and then lift it off of the blade. Now you would be doing this if it was the shaker solid door as well. It's, it's what I do to the plywood which is where the difference comes into place. So this is just a quarter inch groove going around the whole piece. So then once I had that frame together I could calculate my inner dimensions and then add the thickness of that groove which is about a half inch deep and cut my three quarter inch plywood to account for the material I'm going to lose into either side of that groove. I went through and marked that on top of my plywood. You could see I'm about to lift that frame. And so it came in about um, a half inch on either, either edge. So you could see that perimeter I'm making. And these are going to be rabbit cuts. So by removing the same amount of material as that top lip, I'll be able to have a flush panel. So since my um, sides are 7 eighths of an inch, and this is 3 quarter inch, plywood I had to cut um, onto the top and the bottom. So I'm just cutting rabbits using my jig with the feather board on top of it on all of my pieces and then I'm gonna have to flip it and cut the same as well. So with that groove in my lumber I have a quarter inch, a quarter inch groove and then another quarter inch of material. So I'm cutting that first rabbit is about a quarter inch deep and then on the bottoms, like I said, since there's only three quarter inch plywood, the groove is not as 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 thick. It's a little bit thinner. It was more like um, three sixteenths. So I'm going through and just now I'm test fitting that piece to make sure that it fits in there. You want a nice snug fit, but not too tight so that the the panel can't can't float in in the frame. So once I had um, those rabbits cut on both sides, I could test cut, uh, test fit my, my frame around that panel. You want this panel to be plywood because the plywood isn't going to move on you as much as solid lumber will um, with relative humidity that occurs around here at least at the change of the seasons. If that inner portion was solid lumber, um, you could have some real problems with this being a mitered frame. And then um, I have still haven't glued up this panel. So then switching gears back to the legs, I found a very affordable um, place online that sells, these were 32 inch maple, maple turning blanks actually that I was able to use as legs. 
with all four of them, it was still would have been cheaper than if I went to the lumber yard by me and bought a big slab of maple. So I'm just, they came a little rough, so I'm just taking like a 30 seconds of an inch off of all the sides so they're nice and smooth. And also they're all the exact same dimension, which is going to be super important when cutting the mortises in these. So for the mortises, I'm going to have three rails around the entire piece, the top rail, which will hold on the top, um, and then two middle rails, which will frame out where the, the drawers are going to be, as well as the two um, will frame out the panels on the side of the piece. So I'm just going through and marking the, um, the panel on top is obviously right at the top, and then the other panels it's three inches up from the bottom and then I think 12 inch gap and then another another two the rails are all two inches so I was marking out those two inch rails the top rail is only an inch so with this scrap piece of wood which is going to be the same thickness on my tenons I'm going through and marking all of my mortise and tenons just because the jig I'm using is really great for repeatability but there's kind of a window you use in order to see the material and I find it's easiest if you just roughly mark everything to make sure it's all lined up so this is the mortising jig I'm using and I have a videos of showing of me making this so I'm not going to get into um, grave detail but you basically have a fence on the bottom there that's holding the legs and a stop so that you could cut the same ones and then I just have it clamped on the other side and the mortise rides in that carriage back and forth and creates identical mortises so since I'm cutting two mortises a mortise on the side and the front I could go through and cut two at a time and on one piece and then cut all of the identical ones on all of the pieces at once if that makes sense so I could cut these two middle ones and then the two middle ones on my other three legs reset my stop and then cut all of my tops reset my stop and then cut all of my bottoms and you get these nice uniform mortises that are all perfect because um, the jig is functions in a way that it cuts the repeatability of it is is quite good so this is just what that top side looks like. They're they're smaller because those are only the inch the inch rails and those legs aren't cut to final final length, which is why you have all that extra material on top. So after that, it was time to make my tenons after I had all my mortises cut and um like I said, the the two bottom rails are 2 inches and the top rails are an inch. So I just took some maple off my stack and ripped a bunch of it down into 2 inch and 1 inch strips. Then I could just set up some stops on my radial arm saw and cut all my pieces so they're identical lengths. So the side strips, no matter what thickness the rails were, were I think about 14 inches and the front ones were about 52 inches. And I had to use a stop on the left hand side of my saw for the longer ones. And that was when I realized I wasn't going to be able to use my tenoning jig to cut all the tenons because the ceiling in my shop is really low and these um, 54 inch pieces wouldn't, wouldn't clear the ceiling. So in order to deal with that, I just cut um, curves on my radial arm. So I raise the blade so that you're getting a perfect tenon. Um, it's cutting the same amount of material off of both sides. And this is the test piece to make sure it works. And I have a little stop there since they're all one inch tenons. I could just go through and cut all those curves into my pieces. This process takes longer than the tenoning jig, but I honestly really didn't have any other option because they wouldn't fit on the tenoning jig. You can cut these with a router, but I think the radial arm saw is still faster. So like I said, I always do test cuts on these because it can be a little, a little hard to narrow in on the height of that blade so that you get the perfect size tenon you need. But once you have it set, you could cut all of them rather quickly. So the one downside to that mortising jig is it leaves rounded over mortising holes. So that there's really two ways to deal with this. You can either square off the holes, which is what I'm doing here, which is doesn't go very slowly if you have a super sharp chisel, especially a maple. Um, if you don't have the right tools, that could take a quite a long time. Or you could round over your tenons. I've done that before. I actually just did a project where I did that, which is really why I, the only reason I chose to square off my mortises on this piece. So with all the tenons cut, I basically just go down the line. And since all the tenons were cut at the same 
on the, at the same saw at the same time and the mortises were cut at the same time they're all uniform which was really great in this piece I didn't really have any problems with getting everything square which would have really thrown off the entire piece if I didn't so I just made sure that the tenons fit in the mortises and then I didn't really bother labeling them because if it fit in one it fit in all of them so then you could see I had my legs all done and with the legs done the two sides are going to have flush panels just like the top. The panels aren't going to be inset at all um, so it's going to be the same process but since I'm using half inch plywood I only have to cut a rabbit on the top side of the piece. So I already took some measurements and I'm rough cutting that plywood. Um, I'm going to have to cut um, route a groove around the two rails and the two legs for this panel to slide into but um, knowing that it's going to be about three-eighths of an inch deep I could I could pre-cut my plywood so I'm going to be cutting a quarter inch groove in that plywood which means that the groove going into all of these pieces isn't centered you could see in that photo it's actually cheated towards the front so that that panel can sit flush so I have a quarter inch dado stack in here and I marked where that groove was going to be so that when I cut a quarter inch groove into the plywood it will sit flush. So there's really a quarter inch lip in the front. You could see how that groove isn't centered. So then I put it back in my pieces and I made marks and I'm going to have to cut a groove into there as well. Um, it was easiest to do this with my router and this jig I made. I have a video on my channel if you want to make a jig like this. I did a test piece just to make sure it would work. And then with a down cut spiral bit, I could go through and cut that straight, straight groove in between my two mortises. So now the plywood could fit in all of my pieces. This is also a nice jig to have because once you have it set up, you could go through and cut all your pieces. I always check everything as I'm going but um, it, they all ended up being identical and it was a pretty easy process. So here you can see that groove now goes around the perimeter of my entire piece and I could fit a panel in there. Now even if you weren't doing flush panels like I am, you would still have to cut that groove to put an inset panel in there um, regardless. So uh, this is the same process for the top. The groove is about a half inch and I always cut these a little bit less so there's uh, a little bit of play so I'm coming in about three-eighths of an inch around the whole piece um, yeah that one is three-eighths and the other one is seven sixteenths so I only have to cut on the top side so I'm using some key stock to make sure that my blade is the perfect height and then I set up my feather board on there so that these cut perfect um, perfect thickness dados I've been using this feather board enough that um, it was a little bit of a pain to set up the first time but now it goes on there fairly easily and then this is just testing as I go off camera I'm testing to make sure you, you kinda have to sneak up on some of these cuts so once I had it perfectly flush I can go through and, and um, set the distance over which is easiest to do without the feather board in place so I could set that, that 3 8 inch thickness and cut the two edges and then switch it to 7 16 and cut the other two edges. So these are pretty short panels so this process goes by, by fairly quickly. I take the feather board off, I adjust it to 7 16 and then send through the, the other side of the panels as well. So I put a little wax on these because you're not going to glue these in place. You want these panels to float. The wax really makes it much easier to fit these together because it's going to be a nice tight fit. Um, they slide into place fairly nicely and then the legs snap back into place. You can see the panel will be inset on the back side but in the front it's nice and flush. So with all of these panels, the, the top, the side panels, and the shelf which will be in the next video, I have about a sixteenth of an inch total on either side of breather room for this this furniture it's getting to be almost autumn which means the humidity is going to be dropping so if anything this piece is going to start shrinking and you want to have a little bit of breather room for the furniture um, and then once I had all of this together I went through and just cut off the top so now everything is um, is the right right height which is 30 inches is 30 inches tall so then it was the same process for putting all the long rails in I had to go through and square up those mortises test fit all of them and um, and then I could put the two sides together with all the rails
if it fit in one it was going to fit in all of them and then this is just putting that whole piece together so I have those two two inch rails on the bottom in the middle because there will be a shelf in the middle and then the ones on top and the tabletop will sit on top of that um, so one one word for anyone considering a build like this the reason that relative humidity was so important and why I left breather room for this is because in your cabinets on, on doors where I, I describe them as sh shaker style where they have an inset and you don't cut those rabbits the the outside frame can move and you won't notice the movement because the inner panel will move as well with these flush panels when the outside panel moves the plywood won't move and you'll get gaps so the customer was fine with that but it's something that you should make them aware of aware of the fact that as the humidity changes you will get gaps between that plywood and that outer frame which on traditional style cabinet doors where your panels aren't rabbited you don't notice that movement there won't be a gap but um, they understood that and were fine with it.